Sony just unveiled for the US market a motion tracker, actually specifically a mobile motion tracker that works on both Android and iOS. The biggest solution here or the biggest thing about this is that this is mobile, meaning you can take it with you on the go. It tracks your head, your hip, the wrists, as well as the ankle. So you're getting full body tracking and a very easy integration into VR chat if you'd like to use it there. Last but not least, this is going to run great on my Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. So let's go ahead and test it out and see all of the benefits of the brand new Sony Mocha V. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so they are always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. The package that they sent me, I'm not sure if this is going to be retail, but it isn't really very descriptive on the front. It just says pretty much Sony. When you open it up, you're pretty much created directly with the Mocha P sensors. So we're going to talk about these. These are obviously going to be married to, let's go ahead and open up, da da da. These are the actual holders. So you have one for the hip. And what I love about this box, actually, it tells you exactly where everything is going to go. Let's see if we can get this. So yeah, you have the hip one there. This one just clips on and you're able to put it on. You have the head tracker on the right and then two ankles, if I'm not mistaken, and then two wrists. So you have six different sensors that will mount to give you the best body tracking that you can get. When it talks about the actual sensors themselves, it comes in this nice little case, closes itself again right there, Sony Corporation. USB-C is for the charging, that's going to be the only way to do it. And it charges all of the sensors at the same time. And the really cool thing about them is that they're magnetic, so they're not going to fall out of here even if this thing falls down and opens up. Now each sensor does have its own code and two prongs to be able to charge from the case. So magnetically connected and prong connection at this, uh, on each one to be able to charge them up so that you know you're always running with the full charge battery on this. Each one of them will actually have head hip right and left right and left wrists and, and ankles so you know exactly which one needs to go and of course you just marry them to the, to the actual holders put them on and we launch the application to be able to set them up now from a configuration standpoint you just need to download the application again available for both android and ios uh, install the app sync up the sensors you go through a setup at the first time i'm going to show, show you guys real quick and the main benefit about them is once you have them synced you'll be able to start uh, basically creating content on the go or even at home the benefit of course is this is all done on device now, one thing that I forgot to mention before is that each one of these gray uh, buttons on the side is actually a button. So if you press it, it is actually going to turn on. Now that turns on sync mode. So when you're syncing them up or when you're first configuring them, you should do it in this order. Do not pump, uh, basically click all the buttons so that it doesn't turn on all the sensors. If you do, that's gonna just show you a list of sensors that you need to basically then take the sensor itself, look at the actual number on the back, make sure you match it, and then sync up each piece to the right uh, to the right configuration so that the system knows this is the head unit and these are the wrists, the ankles, and then and this is the hip unit. Once you have that configured and you're ready to use the application, pretty much just turn on the app and you'll have two configurations. Check recorded files, obviously for things that you've already done. Start motion capture will start you into a, almost like a calibration process every single time. And this is allowing us to actually have the best calibration or the best configuration for when you're starting to use this system. Next, what we'll go ahead and do is confirm. You'll notice all of the different sensors are shown up here. These are all the little monitors. And you'll notice that it's gonna go ahead and try to connect to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on all six sensors and that's how you do that. You just click the buttons on them, they're all on. And I'm gonna say connect sensors. And it's gonna go one by one validating the connection and they're all gonna be connected at the same time. Now, as you saw there, it went one by one, starts all the way from the top, goes to the bottom, and then you go from there and gives you the information on basically how to use the different options. The, the, just so you know, if you ever mix them up, uh, the straps or the holder that has the shorter straps, those are going to be for your wrist and the longer ones are going to be for your ankle. Obviously, the hip goes on your belt buckle or on the side of your whatever you're wearing. And of course, the head unit, I've seen different people doing differently. Uh, I'll probably say is overall, I like to put them on where the sensor is facing forward so it has the least amount of uh, interference with my device. But if you're going to be moving a lot and going around a lot, my recommendation is to put them probably at the back. And once you get to the next level, I'll explain to you how to actually mount the sensors. Now, the cool thing about this is you cannot mount these incorrectly. Like, look, what I mean by this is if you spin them on where it needs to go it will clamp on only in one configuration the magnets drop it straight where it needs to be short answer is it actually goes magnets to the actual clips because there's no uh, actual configuration there and the sensor just goes facing up so where you essentially you're able to read the word sony and hip at the same time that's how you'll know you do it correctly and it is clamped in not just magnetically so if you're trying to remove it without re opening the clamps it doesn't work open the clamps remove it you're ready to go and then put it back in the case so that it comes back and charges whenever it's ready now the reason why they're all green is because they're all synced up and they're connected to my phone if one of them was flashing a different color you know you have a problem and the app will more than likely just share with you that you need to reconnect the sensors this configuration that we just saw right now gives us a couple of things that we need to do a sync up and calibrate and the other one is also put in the right height so that the application knows how to compensate for the person that's using it so what you want to do is just go in there confirm it update it and once you're done with that 
you're going to go through a calibration process which is the next one and that requires you to start by standing in a standing firm position once you hear the little voice tone you move up one step stand up again and then start the calibration this process is super simple but it easily is messed up if you're not focusing on it so i would recommend you putting the phone on a table or somewhere that it's safe hit the start calibration stand up for about it and again once this asks you to mix the noise just move forward till it's done and then you'll get the confirmation saying that you are calibrated and once you have all the sensors installed, like right now I have it already mounted, you go through the calibration and you're able to set it up. And I didn't want to do it in the office because as I'm sitting here recording the video for you guys, it's just not going to look as good. I've done a pre-recording there. This was the initial setup that I went through it. So for the most part, again, as I mentioned to you guys, this is the anime looking character. This is the girl one. You're able to change over to the human one. You have the ability of basically resetting and positioning your character in a specific space. And this one right now is just an open space, nothing behind it. You're able to change the background to even make it into a green screen. And I'll share with you guys some samples with that uh, mirroring the character so that you actually get it to move in the right orientation for you microphone turns on also if you're able to if you'd like to you can actually allow the character so that when you're recording audio the character looks like they're moving their lips with you access to the library video and of course motion caption now motion caption is what we're going to be using to go into vr chat but that's one of the things if you just want to create content on the go by yourself this is going to be pretty much the best solution if you do end up bringing in or creating your own avatar you just basically select the avatar pick up the actual folder that you created your avatar with and then load it up directly into the app and what i really liked about this is that it's easy to set up again i just did this real quick i put it on uh, the phone on the table and started recording it does a three minute three second countdown and once you have that done it pretty much just starts mimicking and configuring the, the way you're working. This is me literally tracking both my right and left hand. And at that point, you're pretty much able to set it up and use it with whichever way you'd like, either directly with the built-in avatars or again, bring in your own. Now, up to this point, everything has been pretty simple. Again, you just, it's, it's so simple, it's crazy that it actually works. Uh, now, the biggest benefit, of course, is when you're outdoors, you do need to bring the straps and you need to bring the case. There's only a carrier for this one. So just be aware that you do need to have those mounted. And of course, have enough space so that you can actually focus on what you're doing. Once you have done the calibration and everything is set correctly, again, make sure that the height is also configured correctly. Everything is going to work great. And what I found for at least my configuration, when you're using the sensors and depending on where your phone is sitting, try to make the sensors on you move or position in the, I guess, forward position to the phone. So you have no blockage or any kind of issue. So never, if the phone's sitting in front of you, don't put the sensor on the back of your, uh, your wrist, put it in the front so that when you're standing straight down, your wrist is facing it. And of course, as far as the head sensor, I've seen it put on both ways. I've on the front or on the back it really depends on what you're using uh, we tested it out myself and my son and of course we had an opportunity to play with this so as you're seeing right now this is a quick clip that we're doing straight up in our living room that was just pretty much turning it on calibrating and literally in less than one minute we were set the avatar that we're using here i did create using vroid and this is purely with the free functions that they have in there. You're able to obviously customize it way more than this is kind of possible, something closer to the anime character that they had in there. But as far as what I needed to do there, it was mostly just to kind of get it quick and dirty. Um, how quickly can I get set up and up and running with Mokopi and that was how easy it was. Now, the tracking uh, overall the tra is pretty decent. I found that it's a little bit delayed in some areas depending on what you're doing. So if you're moving very fast, there's gonna be a little bit delay. But if you're just standing and just having a standard conversation, I guess more like the speed that we're doing it in this video this is going to work perfectly fine there's no issues there uh, where i had my son calibrated originally and you're able to see him moving uh, you're able to turn on a green screen behind the character so that you can actually remove them and then put them let's, let's see if we can put them right there on that table right there moving and of course the ar mode makes it even more functional because now you're able to be in an actual space so although again we're using it in the uh, in the living room you're able to do it outdoors you can do wherever you want be aware though that if you're in an environment where there's a lot of Bluetooth interference, let's say a conference or something like that, performance may get degraded because again, it's using Bluetooth as a connectivity protocol directly to the sensors. They're all connected via Bluetooth to your device. But in general, if you're using this with VR chat, this is obviously gonna add a lot more functional and more, uh, more dimension into your character, of course, because your hands are being tracked correctly, your head movements being tracked correctly. Not to say that, let's say, uh, an Oculus Quest wasn't gonna do a great job, this just improves the functionality. And of course you can customize it and import uh, your, your own personal avatars as well. So with that being said, as far as the function and how this works, I'm really excited to see that this is coming to a mobile solution. Meaning we can take this with us wherever we want. We can travel with this. We don't have to worry about bringing uh, like a lot of wires or so on. Again, there are a lot more advanced ways of doing this, but from a mobile solution, this is a very unique experience that I'm really excited about. I do want to say thank you very much to Sony for allowing me to check out the brand new Mokopi. Again, very small, portable, again, motion tracking solution for your smartphone. And 
Of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. And uh, actually share with me, if you guys have VR characters and stuff like that, I'd love to uh, hear about that. So share with me uh, comments in the description below. What are the characters? What do you use to create? Vroid was the only one that I was able to actually do quick and easy in and out. And didn't even have to pay anything. I literally just went in, set up my character, went through a few customizations, and of course, trying to get it as close as I could. I couldn't add a beard to it, but it worked. So I'll see you in the next video. And of course, be safe.